Can this PC run every operating system natively? No VMs, emulation, or anything like that? Well, if you're talking about every OS that has ever existed, the answer is no. Operating systems are designed to accommodate different hardware. Some hardware limitations are simply due to the technology at the time or the nature of the device. But other limitations are intentional. Things like the architecture, kernel, firmware, buses, and drivers play a big role when it comes to compatibility. That said, I wanted to see if I could run the following operating systems on the same hardware. First is some form of Linux. This is a no-brainer. Ironically, I think Linux is the easiest entry on this list to get running. Unless you're using something super niche like Cubes OS, any modern Linux distro should work. Next is Windows 2000. I believe this is the oldest version of Windows that is likely to work. Third, we have Windows 11. To be clear, I hate Windows 11, but if I can run Windows 2000 and Windows 11 on the same machine, then in theory, every other version of Windows should work. Fourth is some form of macOS. I don't like macOS, but I thought this would be interesting as I've never built a Hackintosh before. Fifth is some form of BSD. Sixth is Haiku. I think this will make a particular YouTuber happy. Seventh is ReactOS. This is notoriously hard to run on real hardware. And eighth is Temple OS, the most based operating system on the planet. This video is not a review of these operating systems, but I think this video should be interesting since there are pros and cons to running an OS on real hardware as opposed to a VM. So what PC am I using for this? Well, it's a desktop I threw together using a combination of parts I already had and parts I was able to get cheap. For the motherboard, I'm using the stock one from a Dell Optiplex 7010. This is an LGA 1155 board that supports both Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge processors. There are a few reasons why I bought this board, even though I don't think it's the best option. A. It was cheap. B. I have a spare case that's compatible with it. And C. I have another use case in mind and decided it was best to kill two birds with one stone. For the CPU, I'm using an Intel Core i5-2400. This CPU was only 50p from CEX, except not really because I had to pay £2.95 for shipping. I stuck with Intel because Apple hasn't made a Mac with an AMD processor, although interestingly some people have done Ryzen Hackintosh builds. I'm only using 4GB of RAM because Windows 2000 is 32-bit only, so going above 4GB is pointless. For the GPU, I'm using an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 460 because I read some people got it working with Windows 2000 if you use an older driver. And for storage, I have a few different mediums. To run the OS's, I have two SSDs and a few hard drives. Installing everything on one drive would be chaos and likely impossible. But I can't have a drive for each OS, as there's a limit to how many SATA drives I can have connected, since I'm using a really crap power supply. I contemplated using two power supplies, but it would be a very janky solution. For the installation media, I have a few USB flash drives. You can use one, but having a few saves a lot of time and makes life easier. And since I already own them, I might as well make use of them. Since this PC has a DVD drive, I decided to pick up some blank DVDs, just in case. But this turned out to be a lifesaver. On the 240GB SSD, I decided to triple boot Windows 11, Linux, and BSD. I started by installing Windows 11, because if you install Linux or BSD with a graphical installer like Calamares, it will typically add an EFI entry for Windows in the bootloader. Windows 11 wasn't hard to install, however I had to bypass Microsoft's stupid system requirements using some registry edits, and then I had to use the bypass NRO hack because there's no way in hell I'm signing in with a Microsoft account. After all that though, Windows managed to fetch the drivers using Windows Update. 
While that was taking place, I created two blank partitions with no file system or drive letter assigned. Next, I installed Linux. To be more specific, I installed NixOS with the LXQT desktop. There's no reason why I opted for NixOS specifically, other than I've been using it lately and I quite like it. Then I installed BSD. I initially planned on installing FreeBSD, but I couldn't get a desktop running with this GPU, so I decided to install GhostBSD instead. This automatically installed the Refined Bootloader, so I could run Windows 11, NixOS, and GhostBSD from one menu, which is very handy. I then moved on to Windows 2000. Due to its age, it doesn't natively support booting from USB. I tried burning a DVD, but for some reason it kept failing. Since DVDs aren't too common nowadays in the Windows 11 era, I assumed I would have better luck burning a DVD from within Windows 7, but that wasn't the case. I was able to burn Windows XP Professional x64 to a DVD, and I figured I could install XP and downgrade to 2000 from within XP. But this whole time I was being an idiot, and I realised I just had to use a different DVD. Well, at least you know 7 and XP work. A problem I heard about with the Windows 2000 installer is not just booting from USB, but the lack of USB peripheral support. I decided to try it anyway, but I ran into that problem and some other problems. I then came across this custom ISO of Windows 2000 that allows it to run on modern hardware, and it worked flawlessly. I was able to install Windows 2000 to an 80GB hard drive, and I was able to get a glorious 32-bit color 1080p desktop using an older NVIDIA driver. Next up is macOS, which I tried installing via OpenCore, and spoiler alert, I wasn't able to get macOS installed. With macOS being very locked down, hackintoshing is not as simple as just flashing an ISO. It's a very involved process that involves steps like selecting specific text files and generating a fake serial number so it thinks you're using a real Mac. I later found out neither the GPU or the CPU's integrated graphics are compatible with macOS. I'm not too surprised about the GPU, but I was surprised about the Intel HD graphics, so perhaps later down the line I can trial with a different CPU. Next is Haiku. This is the spiritual successor to BOS. This one was surprisingly easy to install. I installed it to a 500GB hard drive. Not that Haiku needs 500GB, but I didn't have any smaller drives. Although if I didn't need persistent storage, I could just run the live environment off the USB. NVIDIA driver support is very limited, although the integrated graphics seem to fare a bit better. Next up is ReactOS. This is basically a free software Windows clone designed to be binary compatible with Windows NT. This OS is notoriously hard to run on real hardware, although I was able to install it when I burnt ReactOS to a DVD. Another thing worth noting is I'm using ATA mode rather than AHCI mode for these operating systems. In my testing, I flicked between ATA and AHCI, but ATA seems to be more compatible overall, although macOS is an exception, and from what I've read, you pretty much have to use AHCI. ReactOS doesn't fare well with either the GPU or the integrated graphics. Every time I tried installing graphics drivers, I would just get a blue screen of death. Just like with Haiku, the integrated graphics are a bit better, although neither of them are particularly good. And the final entry is Temple OS. Booting from a USB didn't work, but booting from a DVD did. I couldn't actually install this operating system, but since it's a very minimal OS, for testing purposes it runs just fine from a DVD. This OS is honestly worth its own video, but here's something cool. I don't have any external speakers, but when I play this game, you'll notice there's sound coming from the PC's internal speaker. So what have we learnt from this video? First of all, if you're planning on trying something like this, 
please don't unless you have a lot of patience and no social life. Secondly, I was surprised that this worked. Yes, it was a lot of work, and obviously some OSs run better than others, but with the exception of macOS, I was able to install each OS, or at the very least boot into a live environment and do things. With a few hardware changes, I could probably get other OSs running. Since OSs are a big thing on this channel, I think this scrap PC could be very useful. With that said, thank you all for watching. If you like watching me lose my sanity to answer questions nobody asked, consider buying me a cup of tea. With that said, cheerio.